Hello, my name is Arya Prima from the Coding for Young Minds Community Organization. And thank you everyone for joining me today for this really exciting tutoring session. So today we're gonna to be covering polymorphism with the Java programming language, but more specifically a aspect of object-oriented programming. So let's get started with this really exciting tutoring session. So hopefully everyone can see this code over here. And if you were here for the previous session on inheritance that we covered um, previously, we, as you can see, you can actually recognize this code uh, that's over here. So we're just going to be actually building off of this and expanding off of what we made last time with inheritance as what we're gonna be learning today, polymorphism is really an extension of this and we're gonna be building off of those concepts. So, what we learned last time, just a quick recap, is just like objects, classes can be described by data and methods. And all objects share the value of static attributes. And we can also create a static method to actually access these static attributes. So that's just from our previous sessions on methods. So now what we're actually going to be doing is going to be looking more into um, polymorphism. So essentially, when we talked about inheritance previously, we actually discussed the problem of how separate classes have almost the same attributes and methods. And we also got aware of the topic of inheritance. And we also use inheritance to find how dogs and cats can have common attributes and methods. So if we remember our animal class that we looked at uh, last week uh, for our programming session, we actually were able to uh, use inheritance to find out how these dogs and cats can have uh, common attributes. So now what we're gonna do is we're actually going to expand on this and look at um, polymorphism. So as I mentioned before, in the last class, we worked on cats and dog classes and cats had the method purr while dogs had the method bark. Um, but essentially the Purr and bark are basically the way that cats and dogs speak. So although they are different actions, so although it's purring and barking, they're both performing the same thing essentially, which is speaking. So we know that uh, dogs bark and cats purr. So if there's another animal that we wanna throw in there, for example, an owl, um, we would have to once again, create a new method for a hoot or whatever sound that the owl makes. So if only there was a general method to encapsulate all of these animals speaking actions, for example, a speak method, uh, we could have just wrote owl.speak um, without knowing what the owl is actually trying to say. And by doing this, we can actually save a lot of time and we don't have to actually go ahead and write um, the kind of speaking action that each animal performs every single time we want to add in an animal. And this is where polymorphism actually comes in. So the actual literal definition of polymorphism is basically means that it takes many forms. I'll just write that down for everyone. So polymorphism. Uh, so means one object takes many forms. And I'm just going to comment that out. So this is what polymorphism means. And essentially in object-oriented programming, which is what we're actually looking at right now, uh, when two classes have a method with the same name but different functionalities, um, this is where polymorphism will play in. And just to clarify this to everyone a bit more, we're actually gonna be taking a look at a few examples of this, some real life examples of how uh, this would work. So let's go ahead and take a look at a quick example here. So let's say that I have a program that has class name of humans. So let's say um, humans, class humans. And inside class humans, um, we're going to put a humans.walk method um, because an action that a human performs is walking. Similarly, let's put class dog in here. 
and we're going to put dog dot walk. We're going to put the dog dot walk method, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put in a class. Let's see, one more thing. So say cat, and then cat dot walk um, method over here. And as you can see, uh, although there are different species, they all have the dot method defining them um, as they all perform the same action as walking. So they can all perform the walking action. So therefore, we can all classify all of these objects with the walk method. So essentially, this is the same for many other examples as well. But this is just one uh, key example of how polymorphism actually works. For different objects, uh, we can make it take many forms by using that same walk method to kind of classify many different types of objects. So what we're going to do is now we're actually going to see polymorphism um, being put in, into action over here. So what I mean by this is we're going to now look at this code. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to show everyone um, kind of renaming the method per and bark from our code and using method speak instead. So if we remember from our previous session on inheritance, we actually used per and bark methods to classify the sound that a dog and a cat makes. But now we're not going to use different methods to classify the sounds they make. We're actually going to rather use the same method to classify that sound. So we're going to just use the speak method because a bark and purr are both forms of speaking. So just simplify this and make our lives a bit easier. We're just going to use that dot speak method for both of the animals. So as you can see, I went ahead and put that in there. So we have dog one dot speak. That method is there. We have cat one dot speak as well and that method is also there so as you can see we have one centralized method that kind of defines um the action of speaking which is a common action to both cats and dogs so i just want to bring to everyone's attention uh, now that we've been able to see this that polymorphism is actually a technique and it doesn't really depend upon any type of magic functionality within java and what i mean by this is polymorphism actually allows us to have a group of classes that does one same thing and and because of this we can actually add more animals um, and we would expect them to speak as well so as you can see i have an owl over here um, and I've included the dot speak method. So essentially, because of uh, polymorphism allowing us to have a group of classes that does the same thing, um, we can have different objects and we can utilize the same method as long as that method is able to effectively define all objects. So now what we're going to do is we're act actually going to take a look at a new animal other than a dog and a cat. Um, and we're going to be able to add the speak method to it as well. So as you can see, I've actually added an owl over here. I've created an instance of owl and a new uh, class of owl by instantiating it and using the new keyword to do so. And you guys can go ahead and please feel free to add your own speak methods and add your own animals and create your instance of classes as well. But I've just added an owl in, but you can pretty much add any animal. So what we're going to do is inside of this uh, file where I actually created a class called owl um as it is the uh, parent class inside the class animals and what i've actually done down here is i have used inheritance which is what we learned um in our previous tutoring sessions um and i have used inheritance by taking child class of owl and extending it from parent class of animal so as you can see the animal is the parent class um, and child class is owl. So we're just using inheritance here to uh, make this happen. And now what we're gonna do is inside uh, this method speak that we created inside the cl uh, class of inheritance and child class, um, I've actually added how we would expect an owl to speak. So as you can see, we have system.out.print, just a, a standard print statement in Java. And we are just printing hoot hoot because that's a sound an owl makes. 
And now what we're going to do is we're going to actually call this method speak over here. As you can see, we're calling this method speak um, using the above object of owl. And as you can see, I've just added uh, owl one dot speak and I've just called this method up here. And as you can see, that's just a really simple way to be able to add as many attributes, as many objects as you desire, um, and still being able to use the same method over and over and over again. And when we execute the same method with different parameters, it acts very differently. And that's something I want to really bring to everyone's attention uh, when we explore polymorphism uh, more throughout this tutoring session. So let's take a look at this. So in order to actually uh, show everyone what I mean by this, we're actually going to add a, another method uh, with one parameter. So in the past, we've added methods with two parameters, three parameters, but now we're just going to add it with one parameter. And I'm just going to add the method called eat. So what I'm going to do is we're actually going to go up here all the way to our public class. And as you can see, we have added uh, attribute eat. So as you can see, it is of type string. And uh, of course, it's called eat. So as you can see, I added another method with that same name. And I added one string parameter for uh, the food item. So as you can see, it says void eat and then type string caramel. So there's one parameter uh, for the item of food, which is caramel, which is the food inside um this method eat and we just have this instantiated with one parameter here and after that what we can actually see that see is that inside this eat method um we're able to write the print statement to show the food item as well so we can say system.out.print um name which is going to be the name of the animal which we can get to later and see how we can use uh, polymorphism to actually call upon uh, many names. Although we have many objects, we can use this one variable name to call upon uh, those many other uh, instances of animals as well. And as you can see, it says is eating and then plus eat, uh, just using concatenation here to concatenate and print that out. So now what we're going to do is inside this same program, inside the class animals, inside the main method, um, we're actually going to call the eat method using our dog one object and send one food item as a parameter. So let's go down here. So you can see I have put that here as well. So we have dog one.eat and then in brackets caramel. So I actually used this method and I actually was able to send one food item as a parameter and I sent caramel as a parameter. And as you can see, that's another really cool use of polymorphism. You're able to take an uh, instantiate a method and then you're able to call that same uh, method again for many different instances of objects. And similarly, we're going to add another information method that saves values instead of printing them. So as you can see here, we actually printed caramel, but now we're just going to save um, the values instead. And to save the values, what we're going to do is inside our um, parent class of animal, we're actually going to be able to create another method uh, with the same name, and we're going to call it info. So as you can see, we have void info over here, which I've created. And we're going to add three parameters for all these attributes. We have name, weight, and color. So we have input name, input weight, and input color. So these are attributes that we want the user to input. So now, as you can see, we're actually going to be able to uh, use inside this file once again, we're going to use these attributes to set the attribute values to the one given in the method parameters. So as you can see, we have a uh, name equals input name, weight equals input weight, and color equals uh, input color. And we actually set these attribute values to, um, to the ones that were given in the parameters that I defined over here in the info method. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to be able to send the information of name, weight, and color um, all to the existing information method call. So the information method call is 
um, we have that over here. We have dog1.info. As you can see, we have it written twice. So we have dog1.info. So this is the information method call for the dog. Uh, similarly, you can definitely do this for owl and cat as well, but I've just written it for the dog object. And as you can see, I just sent the attributes and characteristics of name, weight, and color and set these values to this uh, information method call. And we actually created this info method call in our previous lesson of inheritance. So you can definitely go and check back on that as well. So in addition, um, what we're going to do and what we're going to look at now is inside um, our main method, we're going to call the info method again, and this time without any parameters. So that's over here. So we're going to call it again without any parameters. So this is called with parameters, but this is called without parameters. And as you can see, it will really make no difference. It's not throwing us an error because of the fact that we already instantiated and used poly polymorphism previously to actually be able to call this method many times, even without the parameters. So now it automatically recognizes our parameters. So now that's great. So now um, if we call the info method without parameters, it'll be able to print attributes. And if we send parameters, we'll actually update the attributes. So like I said before, um, we'll actually be able to recognize what the parameters are um, and we'll be able to update the attributes accordingly. So, that's it for today. So today, um, just to recap once again, we learned about the need and concepts of polymorphism and why they're so crucial to update and really enhance functionality in our code. In addition, we also implemented polymorphism in the uh, dogs and cats program that we did previously in our inheritance lesson. And we also added a new animal owl as well and was able to see the implications of that uh, when we're actually called the speak method among many different types of objects. And finally, we're also able to fix the issue um, inside our code that we had previously with shared attributes and we're able to do that using polymorphism. So now let's go back here and now I would just like to say thank you so much everyone for coming today to today's tutoring session on polymorphism with Java. Um, and I really hope everyone enjoyed this lesson and was able to learn something new, something helpful, and something a bit interesting about object-oriented programming and the Java programming language as well. So this is concepts that can definitely be extended and improved on further. So I encourage everyone to keep on coding and exploring with the examples we did today and seeing how polymorphism can be implemented to make your codes a bit more efficient. So that's it for today. Thank you once again, everyone, for joining me. My name is Arya Pruma, and thank you, and I hope everyone has a great day.